A sinister scam is targeting anyone with a cell phone. I'm Lee Zerk. And I'm T. Chappelle. Today on Investigate TV Plus, a high-tech con that can empty your accounts in the blink of an eye. Had you ever heard of SIM swapping before it happened? I'd never heard of this before. We explain how SIM swapping works and why many victims don't realize they've been scammed until it's too late. Plus, a dark descent. This elite dive team goes beyond saving lives. How one of their deepest dives was also their most personal. Water is um, a beast. It can take you very fast, and that's exactly what happened. And the technology parents of premature babies say is a godsend. It has been probably one of the biggest things in managing my anxiety about the whole situation. In-depth stories that inform and inspire. You're watching Investigate TV+. Plus. Where is your cell phone right now? Chances are it's somewhere close to you. But even if it's right in your hand, scammers can still take control of it and drain your bank accounts. It's a cyber crime called SIM swapping, and it's costing people across the country tens of millions of dollars. Reporter Kristen Crowley shows us how it works and what you can do to protect yourself. For most of us, our cell phones are our lifelines. They hold access to everything from our contacts, to our passwords, to our bank accounts. And in an instant, it can all be taken from you. And it was probably one of the most traumatic experiences I've ever gone through. Daisy Jing. And I went, I'm being hacked. There's wire transfers. They're fraudulent. And Heidi Diamond. Are separated by more than 2,000 miles, but they're connected by one scam. Had you ever heard of SIM swapping before it happened? I'd yeah. never heard of this before. The FBI says many people haven't, and that's why when the crime starts, most have no idea what's happening until it's too late. What was your first clue that something was wrong? I realized, oh wow, like my phone doesn't work at all. At that point, she hopped on her laptop to contact her cell phone company, and that's when she realized she was being hacked. They changed the account name, the email address, and the phone number on file to my Capital One account. All because scammers took control of her phone. Here's how the FBI says SIM swapping works. It begins with identity theft. Scammers steal your information and convince your cell phone company they're you. They say their phone was lost or stolen and they need a new phone with a new SIM card activated with your phone number. Once that happens, all the information on your phone moves to the one in the scammer's hands, leaving your phone useless. An FBI agent we spoke with warned of the all-access nature of the scam and asked we not name him to protect his identity as an investigator. If that person has control of your phone number, then they also have the ability to access all those accounts that your phone number is, is tied to. They didn't realize they were going to start going after like the financial account. That, that's when it was really scary. It was such a panic that it, you know, something was so out of your control. The scammers gain that access because SIM swapping bypasses one of the top protections experts suggest you use, two-factor authentication. If your bank texts or emails you a code, that now goes directly to the scammer, allowing them to reset all your passwords, access your accounts, and start to bleed them dry. That's exactly what happened to Heidi and Daisy, Someone posed as them and got each of their numbers assigned to a new phone. How much money was taken from you? Over $200,000. Just a few years ago, this scam was relatively uncommon. The FBI says that's not the case anymore. So the victims are growing? Growing exponentially. When it first started tracking the cybercrime from 2018 to 2020, the FBI says there were 320 SIM swap complaints for about $12 million in losses. But by 2021, there were 1,600 SIM swap complaints, and in 2022, more than 2,000, costing victims a combined $141 million. The spike is attributed to targeting cryptocurrency, but anyone can become a victim. What happens to these victims afterwards? Can they ever recover what's lost? Sometimes, if it's caught fast enough, it can be pulled back, but typically um, it relies on legal process like seizure warrants generated by us 
to try to go claw back some of those funds and, and try to return them to the victims. But oftentimes you may lose everything. Yeah, you may lose everything. So how can you protect yourself? Here's what the FBI says to do. The first step, don't overshare on social media. Information like the city you live in, where you work, who your family members are, can be used to steal your identity. Sharing details that you have cryptocurrency also makes you a target. Next, set up extra layers of security with your bank and other accounts. You can tell the institution you want to require a code word for certain transactions. You can also give two-factor authentication with a physical security key, essentially a flash drive, instead of using your phone number or email. Daisy was lucky. PayPal stopped the transfers before they went through, and Heidi's bank eventually reimbursed her money. But she says she wants more than just her money back. I want my day in court. I want these people found. I want them convicted. I want them put in jail. They also want their story to serve as a lesson to others. Be vigilant now so you won't regret it later. If your cell phone suddenly can't make calls anymore, you may be the victim of SIM swapping. The FBI says the first thing you should do is contact your cell phone company and banks to alert them of the possible fraud. You should also file a complaint. You can do that by phone with 1-800-CALL-FBI or report it online at www.ic3.gov. In October 2023, the FBI put out a warning about a similar scam called the Phantom Hacker. It happens basically in three steps. Um, there's gonna be pop-ups or a text or an email from somebody purporting to be uh, tech support for your device, indicating that it's important they talk with you regarding protecting your device and your accounts. According to the FBI, the scammers then tell you to contact them. They say they need remote access to your computer in order to run a scan for malware. Afterwards, they claim your computer and accounts have all been hacked. They're going to advise you that you'll be contacted by somebody from the fraud department of your financial institution or from your investment brokerages, and that person will tell you, we need to move your money to a, quote, safe account in order to protect it from the hackers. Once scammers have remote access to your device, they have full control of it. The Bureau warns you should never download software at the request of someone who just contacted you. Still ahead, a screening used to save the tiniest lives is showing early success. The program helping premature babies gain their strength. Plus, a loved one lost at sea. Since we're surrounded by water so much, how many people lose a loved one and they never get to get them back home and carry out their final wishes. You never get to bury them. There's no closure. How a specialized dive team is braving deep waters to bring peace to families. When tragedy in the water is at its worst. Make it tight. Get one up. There's a seat belt cutting. There's a specialized dive team at its best. Mark Michoud and divers at the Southeast Louisiana Underwater Search and Recovery Program are known to do what few can fathom. Get out of the water. Extraction team, where's the team? Disconnect the line. And go under it because he's going to be on that side now. All clear. Four minutes. Index, index, index. For body recoveries, evidence recoveries, we're actually doing what we're training for. And it's been, it's been really good because nobody has enough. We bring a lot of people home and make that happen where we've got just an immense amount of water in different waters. The dive team has searched in some of the Southeast's most dangerous waters in hopes of bringing peace to grieving families. Reporter Rob Krieger shows us how the divers' dark descents can be a beacon of light for families of lost loved ones. Water is um, a beast. It can take you very fast, and that's exactly what happened. Janelle Siebert's husband, RJ, was larger than life. An avid sportsman, he lived life fast and was always eager for adventure. Everybody knew RJ. RJ was huge into hunting, huge into the kids, getting them involved in anything and everything outdoors. His passion, though, scuba, 
and fishing. It was like two in one for him. You know, you're fishing, but you're also hunting. You have to stalk these fish underwater. And um, it was just a challenge to him. It was something different. And um, he wanted to do it every single weekend. It was June 27, 2020, when RJ and his brother and a few friends went diving near a rig in the Gulf. Toward the end of their dive, RJ nabbed a drum and a snapper, then headed for the surface. They were about 50 feet. What I'm told is that um, they saw RJ. RJ was coming up with his fish. By the time they got onto the boat and got their tanks off and got onto the boat, they looked down and RJ was, wasn't there. His brother immediately dove back down, determined to find RJ. And he went straight down and um, he searched, but about three to four feet from the bottom, it's very murky. And uh, he knew he was running out of air, so he came back up. But, you know, his love for his brother brought him back down again. And he did that several times. And then when he came back up, they grabbed him and told him that he cannot do that again. Heartbroken and with the Coast Guard actively searching, the fishermen made their way back home to St. Bernard and called Janelle. I knew something was wrong by the phone call, but I had my daughter next to me, so I had to keep my composure. Um, and when I walked in and I saw the pure devastation in his brother, I knew that um, he wasn't coming home. Her husband's body at the bottom of the Gulf, Janelle was certain she'd never truly get to say goodbye. Since we're surrounded by water so much, how many people lose a loved one and they never get to get them back home and carry out their final wishes. You never get to bury them. There's no closure. Um, and it was our biggest fear. But seemingly out of nowhere, Mark Mishud and his team got right to work. We're in international waters and nobody but the FBI had jurisdiction or we brought in special divers. The guy that's teaching this class right now, Josh Gibbs, was also there with us. It was about 225 feet down, somewhere around there. Um, and they were able to capture images with the sonar that was amazing because you could see a lot. You could definitely tell that that was RJ. It was a shred of hope in a world of pain that kept Janelle going, just a chance that her husband would not be forever lost. Using a specific kind of sonar really helped us to be able to key in and guide the diver to it and get him there. And within days, RJ was on his way back home to St. Bernard. To never have him back home again would have been just so, so devastating that I, I believe that Mark and his team, that they helped us start the healing process when they called and said, we have found him and we're gonna recover his body, he's coming home. Just them knowing that they have their loved one home is, is so important. When we don't know where somebody is, that's a hole that never, it never covers up and it's, it's, it's a terrible thing. It's why Mishud is determined to continue to pass along the knowledge of these dark descents so when tragedy occurs beneath, there can be some peace up above. They suited up and like heroes. And they went down and they got him. And they brought him home to us. That is such important work, yet dangerous work, but it brings families peace. And closure, and people, you know, going through that, you heard from her, she needed that closure and they were able to give it to her. Very yes. tough. Still ahead on Investigate TV Plus, when this bird found itself in a bind. This is nuts. A stranger turned up to help. Probably about 25, 30 pound fishing line braid that was wrapped around both of her ankles. The inspiring effort to get this goose boost. Plus, a new way for parents of preemies to bond with their babies. I check it every night, right before I go to bed. The technology providing a guardian angel for families. According to a 2022 March of Dimes report, more babies than ever are born premature. The group says 10.5% of the babies born in the United States are preterm, and America is considered, quote, among the most dangerous developed nations for childbirth. 
Premature babies can spend anywhere from weeks to months in the neonatal intensive care unit, or the NICU. Reporter Marius Payton shows us how new technology allows some families to feel close to their newborn, even when they're miles away. Photos on a wall mark milestones in baby Sutton's life. They're moments Tullahoma mom Miranda Womack Thank thought you. she'd experience at home, hey girl. not an hour and a half away hey. in a Nashville NICU. It was completely unexpected, a really easy pregnancy up until that point. Sutton was born 13 weeks early, meaning doctors expect her to stay at TriStar Centennial's NICU for at least that long. It's why the Womacks are so thankful for this, a web camera called the Angel Eye System poised over baby Sutton's bassinet. It has been probably one of the biggest things in managing my anxiety about the whole situation. The program's app offers families and loved ones the chance to watch a live stream of their babies whenever and wherever they want. It's just really awesome being able to give them the opportunity to have the view of them outside of the hospital when they're having to go back to work or their maternity leaves over since these kiddos can stay here for quite a while. Are you cutie girl? The Womacks are making it work. They're staying with family who live closer to the hospital, even as they've both returned to work outside Davidson County. It's definitely hard and a challenge to manage all of it, but we know that there's it's not going to last forever. In some ways, it's a very different way to spend the first months with a newborn. But in other ways, Miranda's just like any other mom. A check of her version of a baby monitor gives her peace of mind. I check it every night right before I go to bed um, and that helps me to sleep for sure and get sound sleep and then as soon as I wake up it's the first thing I look at. According to Angel Eye's website it's installed 6,000 cameras in more than 200 NICUs. In addition to new technology, recent research hopes to improve the health outcomes for premature babies. Researchers at the University of Iowa looked at hemodynamic screening, and it showed some early success. It's an ultrasound that captures detailed images of the baby's heart, valves, and vessels. From there, doctors can assess blood flow to all parts of the body, including the brain and lungs. The study found for babies born at 27 weeks or earlier, this screening cut death rates and rates of severe brain bleed in half. This is the first evidence um, ever showing that uh, implementing a very standardized way in which we perform cardiac uh, evaluation improves outcomes. They use this in their clinical practice to better understand the underlying disease states that might be affecting the well-being of premature babies from a cardiovascular perspective. The University of Iowa hopes to train more neonatologists on this screening through a one-year fellowship, which would be the first of its kind in the U.S. Still ahead on Investigate TV Plus, something a foul is afoot for one foul. We could definitely tell once it got on land that there was one of the geese of the four that was limping around and having trouble moving. How this man helped a tangled goose fly free. If you feel like you've seen more geese around, you're right. According to researchers at Utah State University, the overall Canada goose population increased four and a half fold in North America between 1970 and 2012. Resident geese populations increased 15 fold. Researchers say the reason for their success is Canada geese love urban areas, have few natural predators, and have high survival rates. Reporter Steve Harris shows us how a web-footed fowl found itself in a bind and introduces us to a St. Louis area man who stepped in to help. Belleville's Bicentennial Park is a peaceful place. Still, there are a few snags, and sometimes you gotta watch your step, especially if you happen to be a goose. Otherwise, a serene story can become a tangled tale. There she is. Such was the case for this goose. We could definitely tell once it got on land that there was one of the geese of the four that was limping around and having trouble moving. That's Ryan McCann, professional chef turned nuisance wildlife control operator. A Facebook post about a goose in distress caught his eye. 
So he headed to the park to help. Probably about 25, 30 pound fishing line braid that was wrapped around both of her ankles. And it was obvious the line had been there a while because it was starting to cut into the goose's legs. So for three days, Ryan tried to help, but goose didn't trust him till day number three. I took my hat off, I put it over her head, and she was calm. I think after a while she was exhausted. She kind of was at the point where it's like, hey, I, I know what you're doing here, you know, let's, let's, let's get this over with. Take a gander at the video. This is nuts. Um, I got one leg. You can see the other one here, wrapped around. This one here, completely wrapped around. It was wrapped around her toe. Okay, I got all the string off of her. She was wrapped up pretty good, but we're gonna move her back towards the other ones now. Ryan took this fishing line off the goose's legs and carried it back to the lake. No more string on your legs. Look at them scars, baby. I know, you're tired. And thanks to Ryan, this goose is one lucky duck. You wanna walk for me? You wanna show me how you walk? Look at that, no strings. No strings. Operation Goose Rescue accomplished. Honk if you think he's a hero. Oh. Well, that was definitely a happy ending for the goose. I was, as we watched the story, I'm like, where is this thing going? going. And it turned, yeah. hey, happy ending, right? Yeah, happy goose, happy, happy goose, ending. Happy goose, yes. Well, that's it for us on Investigate TV Plus. I'm T. Chappelle. And I'm Lee Zurich. Thanks for watching. On the next Investigate TV Plus. Is childcare affordable? No. It's not. Childcare costs soar nationwide. I think that parents pay more than they can. I think that childcare workers are paid less than they should be. I wish I had a solution. We examine how it's hurting families and what's being done to help bridge the gap.